Come on, let's go on to 29. Let's look at it one more time. Keep your Bible open. If you don't have one, touch somebody who looks like they know Jesus and tell them, share with me today. <laughs> Verse 29 says, the fear of God came upon all the kingdoms of the countries when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Mm -mm -mm. And the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace for his God had given him rest on every side. Ooh, I like that right there, amen. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell him it's time to take your peace back. Tell somebody else, take your peace back. Come on, tell somebody else, I decree it, I declare it, you better do it, let's work this out. Take your peace back back right now amen give God some praise hallelujah you may be seated in the presence of the Lord take it keep your Bible open now take your peace back uh, let me just do a survey of the land is there anyone here who could use just a little bit more peace holler back at me if that's you come on you can stand some peace in your home uh, some peace on your job some peace in your finances. How about just a little peace of mind or do you? A little dab or do you? Come on, give him some more praise here. I can stand some more peace. The Lord told me to tell you it is his perfect will that you walk in perfect peace because you are his child. Somebody just touch your mind and say, more peace, more peace, more peace. Matter of fact, peace is the most precious commodity that you can have in the kingdom. Uh, for regardless of who you are, where you've come from, what toys you have accumulated, I don't care how many uh, folk know you, your notoriety, if you don't have peace, you really don't have much or nothing at all. Somebody holler, ought to holler, peace be unto me. You can have a beautiful family, you can have a beautiful spouse, you can have a beautiful house, you can have plenty of money, you can have all that stuff, but baby, if there is the absence of peace, you'll be as sick as a dog and live in a palace. I wish I had somebody know I'm telling the truth. Now, now, now y'all a smart group, y'all a smart group. So, so, so let's see, what, there are varying definitions of peace. What, what are some secular definitions? Uh, uh, peace, they would say in the dictionary that peace Peace uh, is freedom from disturbance. Quiet. Tranquility. They would say also that it is uh, the cessation, freedom from war and violence. A restful state. But a, a biblical dictionary says that the concept of, of peace in the Hebrew means to be complete. Uh, this ain't none of that. You complete me. I'm talking about real peace. <laughs> uh, come on. To be sound. Somebody say sound. Uh, to be whole and to live real well. Hear somebody say that sound like abundance to me. So look at your neighbor and say peace. Uh, hear me. Here's a definition that the Spirit gave me. It says, peace uh, is a spiritual and internal state of well-being, regardless of your external surroundings. Moreover, it is an internal tranquility that positively affects your external reality. In other words, I have so much peace on the inside of me that when I walk into a situation, I immediately upset the energy balance of the room and it got to behave just because I stepped into the act. Y'all ain't hearing me. I got so much peace oozing out of me that I, like Jesus, can say, peace be still. And the winds got to chill and the waves got, y'all ain't hear me up in here. Look at your neighbor and touch him and say, baby, peace be unto you. Peace, peace. Let me help y'all. There are varying forms and manifestations of peace, but that's why the enemy wants to steal your peace. 
The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll let you keep your stuff as long as he can steal your peace. Because you can have stuff and don't have no peace. And you'll check out of here because you need to understand stuff is never enough. I wish I had somebody up in here who would holler, give me peace. I can get some stuff. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Because the enemy is the devil. He is a demon. He's a demonic spirit. And what you need to understand is that peace of its essence is spirit. Hear me from Galatians. Peace is the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, peace, patience, peace, long suffering. Somebody holler, peace. Peace is a gift of God. John 14, 27, Jesus said it this way, peace, I leave you. Then he really got tight. My peace, I give to you. He said, not as the world gives to you. He says, my peace, I give to you. Oh, Y'all ain't hearing me. Do you understand that you got it going on so much that when the enemy tries to disturb you, your Abba Father through Christ Jesus says, my peace. Right, so no matter what hell and high water comes your way, you ought to be able to say in the midst of a storm, his peace I receive in the name of Jesus. Somebody holler, peace. But here's, here's the deal. Devil wants to steal your peace. But for most of us, Queen Deacon, he don't have to steal our peace. Because we tripping enough that we give him our peace. Come on, work with me. They all going to be smart today. See, the reality is we allow too many things, too many situations, and too many people to get on our doggone nerves. We even have the nerve to confess it to them. You getting on my nerve. Matter of fact, they don't deserve to get on your nerve. And they surely don't deserve to get on your last doggone nerve. You mean you gonna give a fool that don't deserve it your last nerve and tell them you making me sick, you getting on my nerve? Why are you confessing that ignorance instead of confessing but his peace? He gives to me. Tell your neighbor, stop giving your peace away and take your peace back. Grab your neighbor and shake him and say, take it back right now in the name of Jesus. It's silly when you think about it. You're going to let a fool take your peace. Here, take my peace, please. Oh, Jehoshaphat is going to help us take our stuff back. Say it again. Take it back. He was the king of Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel. He was 35 when he became king, and he had a career that spanned 25 years. He was a relatively good king because he tried to turn the hearts of the people back to God. He instituted a nationwide Bible study where he sent great teachers like we have here at New Faith to help people rightly divide the word of truth. <laughs> he, he would tear down the Asherah poles and all of the worship places for idolatry, for Baal, and he would lead the people back to the face of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting closer to God moment by moment. And when we contextualize our text, for you smart ones here, we realize that the Jehoshaphat knew a little something, something about peace. Hit your neighbor, say a little something, something. Turn over to chapter 17. I told you, keep your Bible open, keep your iPad on, keep your eyes sharp. It's time to roll. Second Chronicles 17. This boy knew a little something about peace. Check it out, verse 10 of chapter 17. It says, the fear of the Lord fell on all of the kingdoms of the lands surrounding Judah so that they did not make war with Jehoshaphat. Mm. In other words, there was peace in the land. And because of the fear of the Lord, the enemies of Judah even feared God so much that they dare not attack the people of God so they had a season of peace. Y'all need to hear me. Could you imagine you and God being so tight 
that even jokers who didn't like God or you were afraid to mess with you because they knew that you and God were tight. Y'all need to hear me up in here. You need to have such peace on you that them stank jokers on your job might sniff you, but they ain't coming your way because they know when they come against you, they coming against God himself. Hit your neighbor and say, peace, peace, even on your job. The absence of war, there was peace. Keep walking with me. But something happened by the time we get to chapter 20. Go on back to chapter 20. Verse 1, it says, after this, the Moabites, the Ammonites, with some of the Millionites, came to make war on Jehoshaphat. The southern kingdom under King Jehoshaphat had experienced a season of peace, but now there were confederate nations who were coming together to come. See, the enemy can't come by themselves. They always got to enlist somebody else because of how bad you are and how awesome you are. I wish I helped you understand how bad you know your identity. You need to hear me. We're, 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 let me help you. Whenever you have experienced a season of peace, you can rest assured that the enemy is going to come your way to try to upset your peace. Come here. The enemy comes to steal and to kill, and the enemy can't stand for you to be walking in a place of peace and rest with God. Because when you walk in peace and the rest of God, the enemy knows it's then when you walk in the power of God. When you walk in the peace of God, there's a certain wisdom that comes to you in the midst of chaos that don't come with nobody. Y'all don't hear me. There's wisdom that comes. There's authority that comes. When I have peace, I know who I am. And when I walk in, the theme music plays in my spirit because I got it like that. You don't hear me. But when the enemy comes and steals your peace, the enemy knows that if you're upset, if you're anxiety written, if you're anxious, if you're stressed, if your nerves are on edge, if everything is getting on your nerve, he knows that half the battle is already won. He don't have to do much because if you're stressed enough, you'll disqualify yourself. Oh, hear me real good. Come on, come on. I'll prove it to you. Jumpy people do jumpy stuff. Stress-filled people do stupid stuff that they got to apologize for. Oh, Y'all ain't with me up in here. Have you ever been going through some stuff and come home and cuss at the wrong person and then got to apologize and say, I'm sorry, they got me stressed on my job. So the enemy only has to introduce stress in order to make your home not a home. He'll use you to walk in to mess up your own stuff because you stress over something that's going on outside your house. I wish I had somebody up in here who would receive the peace of God so that you can stop helping the enemy dismantle your own peace. Oh, come on, walk with me. Y'all don't like me right now. I ain't going to disqualify myself. The people of God have been at a place of peace, but now they're at a place of war. Can I help you? But in order to take your peace back, somebody say, I'm taking it back now. Jehoshaphat shows us that first of all, we must purposefully petition the Prince of Peace. Just write that one down. I, I need to purposefully petition the Prince of Peace. Look at verse 3 of chapter 20. It says, alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all of new faith. In this case, the antithesis of peace, anxiety, alarm, and fear gripped the leader and the people. Jehoshaphat was stressed. So the Bible says, so he resolved to inquire of the Lord. He made up his mind. He determined. He purposed and sought after God. He was so determined that he declared a fast for everybody in the sanctuary. Tell your neighbor, we should fast now. Y'all didn't turn because y'all don't like to fast because you like greens and pork and food more than you do going after God. But God says when you make up your mind that nothing can sustain you like the Savior, you're going to run after him more than you run. See, you got to purposefully petition God. 
You got to go after God like your life depends on it. Can I tell you what Jesus told the disciples? Because some of the stuff you're dealing with only comes out by prayer and by fasting. Some of the stuff that you got to break the back of, if you would spend three days to seven giving God some bread and water and vegetables and prayer, he would break the back of some stuff that's been plaguing you for 15 years. Hear me, hear me, hear me. You want to purposefully petition God for one real reason. The reverend prayed it earlier. It's because the Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace. All whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, petition, with thanksgiving, he says, make your requests known unto the Lord. He says, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ. See, they'll be acting a fool, but because you are petitioning God, the peace of God will come over you in the midst of some ignorance. They'll give you a pink slip and you'll be chill. Tell me, hey, I'm cool. Well, whatever, that's your best shot. Now, see, some of y'all sitting up in here worried about some stuff that's going on. Stop giving the enemy your peace. That's crazy. See, I want you to see how progressively and purposefully he went at it. Let, let, me, let me give you something here. To petition is to make a formal request of the one who's in authority. Hear me? Y'all my smart group. You have to make a formal request of the one who's in authority. God is the supreme authority that you have to make a request of. Come, can, can we look at this prayer? You're going to survey it right quick. Look at verse 6 of chapter 20. Look at what he does. He says, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? He purposefully reminds God and himself of God's divine identity and his connectivity uh, uh, to generations. Wait, wait, he says, O Lord God of our Father, O God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Rebekah, Esau, Joseph, Esther, Rahab, O God of all of them who served you in the past. Y'all don't get what I'm saying. You need to understand you ain't here at the 11 o'clock service because you're the only one who just figured out how to pray. The reason you up in here right now is because the God of Big Mama, the God of your mama, the God of your granddaddy, the God of your preaching uncle, the God of uncle, y'all don't hear me up in here. You got to learn how to remind God and yourself that God has been in your family line for a long time. And God, if you delivered Big Mama back then, I know you can deliver me in the suburbs right now. God, you need to understand you God of all of us is, and if you're their daddy, that mean you my daddy. Y'all here. He purposely reminded God, secondly, of his God's lordship, his authority, and God's power. Check out verse 6b. It says, you rule. Somebody say, you rule, God, over all the kingdoms of the nation. Power and might are in your hand. Do, do, do we pray like this? Uh-uh. And, and no one can withstand you. He reminds God of his lordship. Man, when you pray, son, you got to remind God how bad he is. Now, it ain't that God don't know how bad he is. You just need to recall how bad he is. And then you won't feel so bad about the mess you're going through. Because if you know you got a bad God, you know what you're going through. Ain't nothing to your God. You need to hear me. He says, God, you're king of kings and you're the Lord of Lords. Hey God, you know you're the great I am. Hey God, you're the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the author and the finisher of my faith. God, you know you are my redeemer, don't you God? You know you're the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Daddy, can I tell you who you are? I just want to remind you that we got it on. You neither slumber nor sleep. So since you awake, I might as well take me a nod. God, I want to let you know, look here, and can't no nation stand up again. You know them fools didn't come up 
against you. God, you need to understand that all the nations bow down before you. Iraq got to bow down before you. Iran got to bow down before you. ISIS has to bow down before you. Come on, up in here. Terrorists got to bow down before you. Ebola got to bow down before you. Ain't nobody bad like you. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess because ain't nobody bad like you. You got more power in your pinky than they got in their arsenal. Your strong right hand will fight for me. Check it out. Check it out. He purposefully reminds God of his faithfulness that he has demonstrated in history. Look at verse 7. Come on. Stay in the Bible. I want you to get to a place where you don't let nobody tell you nothing stupid because you already know it. Come on. Look at verse 7. He says, oh, wow, God. Did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people knew faith and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham your friend he reminds God of his past divine activity of how he delivered good God from Zion he says to God God didn't when we came out of Egypt you ran them jokers out that because you promised your boy Abraham and let us remind you he happens to be the father of the faith and because we are the seed of Abraham through Christ Jesus whatever you gave Abraham belongs to us at the 11 o'clock service sitting in purple seats in a 30 million dollar building that everything you gave to him belongs to us so that when I'm praising you and because I know who I am and I'm not the, I'm the head and not the tail I understand that what you gave to Abraham you've already given y'all ain't hear me real good up in here so you need to understand God that I understand that what you have for me is for me and everything you promised me it's mine so I don't care who shows up to try to take it from me what hater doesn't like that I have it they don't have a heaven or a hell to put me in and they might not like it but you set up prepare a table before my enemies so they can sit and watch me eat and I have to pull off a chicken leg to feed them in their house I wish I had somebody up in here who prayed to God like that to let God and yourself know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift. Y'all ain't hear me. I, 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 I. Yeah, come on, I just want to know in this room, has God delivered you from anything? Has God ever put your enemy on the run? Has God healed anybody in this house? Has God paid a bill when you didn't have no money? Has God kept you when you were lonely? Has God kept you in your right mind? I just want to know, has God brought anybody off of their sick bed? I dare you to give God some history praise. You did it last year. I know you're going to do it this year. Dustin, you're telling me he's been good to me. He, he's been good to me. I, I, You looking better than what you've been through. You need to give God some praise up in here because if you knew what I went through, you might not sit next to me. Good God from Zion. I ain't always look this good. I, I ain't always say it hallelujah. I, I ain't always dance with God. I, I ain't always had money in my pocket. I, Hey, 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 when I look back over my life, do I have anybody got a testimony? Got a, yeah, I got a testimony. Hey, hey. You ain't going through nothing now that he ain't delivered you from before. When you thank him for his faithfulness, come on, stay in it, verse 8. Then you can tell him what you've done as his covenant child.